Hey there. I just spent the last six days slugging, installing a drain tile along the side of my house. You can see my neighbor's property is higher and his water drains to my foundation. We've had issues. Took this picture last October when I purposed that I would have to repair this. So I decided to install a four inch diameter drain tile, right, right where you see the four by fours used as the garden edge. I'm going to take those out along with this little section of concrete at the front end and install my mole pipe right there. Now I was going to drain to the front yard but uh, I measured, I only have about a six inch decrease in height which isn't a lot to go nearly a hundred feet. And so I checked with the town about connecting to the storm sewer but the connection is four and a half feet below the sidewalk the town sidewalk so I'd have to break the town sidewalk get a permit for that several hundred dollars and obviously I'd have to pay somebody to connect to this the to, to town storm sewer so that's something I can't do had a couple contractors look at it nobody wanted to do anything for less than eight thousand dollars so had to find a better way to do this so I used a water level and I measured uh, I'll show you the water level in a bit. I measured about a 15 inch height difference to the back of the yard. And so I decided I would install a catch basin. I'll take a look at one of these. So the catch basin just releases water to the surface, but it's far from the house and it's, it's lower down, so it should move the water away. So here you can see that I've pushed the large uh, garden stone back and I'm about to pull out this 4x4. Four four. I also removed a short section of concrete edging because the uh, drain line is going to run right down and in that spot. So here you can see I've uh, dug out all of the area where the mole pipe is going to go. I dug this about 8 inches deep and this took me a day and a half. This was terrible. Uh, you can't drive a shovel in it. It was full of stones and, and garden cloth cover. Most of this was done on my knees. <laughs> very, very difficult to do. Down about eight inches. And here's a view from the other side. Um, and notice the pile of dirt I dug up. It's good that good thing I had this roll of plastic. So that makes cleaning the grass a lot easier afterwards. So next I installed uh, or poured in this this pea stone, 3 8 inch diameter. Oh, they're 40 pound bags, um, seven bucks a piece at Rona. Uh, and they're round and small and they do a good job of protecting the, the pipe from picking up dirt. So I put about an inch to two inch layer in the bottom of my trench of this pea stone. Here's a view from the other side. You can see how it kind of uh, divides or wise off. Uh, this is where I'm going to have to dig a trench to the back of the yard, but we'll do that later. Let's get the mole pipe in first. Here's another view, and this is where I inadvertently, uh, what I thought was a root from a tree, I cut with my axe and turned out to be the cable from my pond pump, and that was that made another piece of work for me to do later on. Oh boy. Yeah, I was not happy about that. So here's now the mole pipe is installed. This stuff um, is amazing. I don't know that it's that high a quality. It's a corrugated, perforated, soft plastic. Well, I should say rigid, but it's not particularly strong. It's covered with a, with a cloth sock to minimize the amount of soil that would go in and plug it. But it stretches. the. Here's a picture from Lowe's website showing the material I bought. It says 40 feet, but actually it, when I came, when it came, it's 52 feet. It's funny, they have two different descriptions on their website and it turned out to be 52 feet, which was great, but my, my length was actually 45. I did adequately. This comes in a rather small, uh, compressed, like an accordion, all compressed, and you can stretch it out to at least three or four times its length, so it makes it easy to fit whatever area you have. So here's a photo of the cover uh, that came with the pipe. Again, it's a different product than what was advertised on the website. 
here they're calling it mole pipe FTR but uh, and it was relin anyway it doesn't really matter it, it all worked out all right so here's the mole pipe again installed I put some large stones on to keep it down and then I began to fill it with uh, pea stone on either side and on top now I've run out of pea stone but I'm, I'll get some more in my next trip to the hardware store and here's a view from the from the other end so the hard work is done now it's just a matter of laying the large stone back on top so I, I capped the far end of the mole pipe at the beginning and it's, it's open at this end and I'm going to have to continue to dig my trench now to the back of the yard 55 more feet uh, to connect to the catchment basin that's the next step and that took me well a full day to dig the trench and then a full day to put the soil back so I pulled a chalk line and then I put some uh, short pegs in the ground at 10 foot intervals that marked how deep the trench needed to be to keep the slope descending gradually to the lowest point. Don't want to have any low spots in the middle, right? So the trick is how do you actually find uh, how deep to dig because you can't use the surface of the ground. In fact, in the center of my lawn it comes up quite a bit and then goes down. I have to use some other measure, either a, a laser. In this case I, I went with a, a water level. So the water level is inexpensive and it's just pure genius. I saw this on uh, a DIY YouTube video. Basically uh, I purchased 100 feet clear PVC tubing, that's three quarter inch ID. It was 40 bucks on Amazon, good price. I had two pieces of wood, furring strips, and I connected two rulers to them. So the rulers are mocked off, of course, in inches, and they're, they're start the same at the bottom. So by filling this most of the way with water, just the water level halfway up the ruler, uh, make sure you get the air out. You can set this in the ground, and you can determine levels, because water always seeks its own level. So here's my water level sitting in the hole where the catchment basin is going to go. Uh, if the level were the same at both points, then the level of water would be the same on the ruler at both points. But in this example here, since this particular point is low in the ground, then the water will actually sit or rise higher in the, on the ruler in the hose. And you can measure the difference in height, and that's the key to finding your level. So next I'm ready to start digging my trench and I realize that I really can't dig with the, the chalk line there. It's just going to cut the line so I figured a better uh, paint. Got some spray paint and used my 4x4s four as straight edges and marked uh, a path all the way down the, the grass, all the way down the lawn, 55 feet, about 6 or 7 inches apart, just a little wider than my, my shovel will be. So I, then I can take the chalk line out and start digging. Right, so um, here I start digging my trench. Now, uh, I didn't mention earlier, but uh, when I was digging my first section, pushing through all those rocks, I actually snapped my uh, my shovel in half, and I, I actually turned out to work out very well. So usually about eight inches long, eight inches deep, I actually ground it down and sharpened it halfway at about a four inch depth, and I used that to cut my borders all the way down about four inches, as you see here. So here I have my first four inch trench dug all the way down. I carefully took out all the sod. And now the next step is to determine how deep to go from here, right? So I want to So it's actually cutting anywhere between say nine inches and about oh almost twenty inches deep at, at some of the points. So that means uh I dig again, but this time using a, a drain tile shovel. So here you can see the uh, using the water level set up in two locations and again the difference in height tells me how deep I am a relative one to the next and I just use a lawn chair to support it so it wouldn't fall over as I dug along and uh, this this took a whole day it was a lot of work so with my trench finally dug and dug to the correct level I connected my catchment basin to a one inch PVC pipe and I used a flexible section at the very uh, end near the catchment to give me some so it wouldn't be too rigid. 
I glued it all together sitting on the lawn and then I very uh, carefully just slid it over and dropped it into the hole so there you see it's ready to go. So the next day was all about uh, putting the soil and the sod back in and uh, that's a learning experience too. I have to pack it in and actually have the sod raised a bit because it's going to sink. I still managed to have some a fair bit of soil left over. don't know where it came from. Fortunately the neighbor uh, took some of it for me. See I'm gradually working my way back to the top end. Uh, the worst is over now. All right, so here I've got it filled right to the top just about to the point where I'm going to join my one inch pipe into my four inch mole pipe and um, what I have to do is I bought a a cap for the end and drilled a hole offset it so it's the bottom of of the circle and slid it into this uh, mole pipe and then my one inch PVC pipe slipped into it so to, that was my reducing coupling you can actually see here uh, this start of the the line that I inadvertently chopped with the axe my power line to the pump yeah so when I had uh, sunk this cable in the ground about 25 years ago I I wisely put it inside a, looks like a polypropylene one inch line and hoping I wouldn't at a later time damage it but I still managed to cut it in half using my axe so it wasn't that brilliant I guess Here's the recovered piece of polypropylene pipe that was protecting my electrical cable. I managed to chop it, so at least I was able to find the spot. It wasn't too hard to get to. I was very thankful for that. So to repair the cable, I twisted, well, I got a section of wire to insert between the area that's cut, and I twisted the wires together. I soldered them, then I put them in marrettes. I filled the uh, marrettes of the neutral and the ground with just five minute epoxy. It doesn't really matter if they get wet or just ground anyway. But for the, uh, the, the live wires, the black ones, I actually um, encased them in epoxy. So if you recognize these old um, um, plastic containers for the 35 millimeter film cartridge cassettes for old 35 millimeter cameras, being a, a pack rat pays off sometimes. I had a couple of those sitting around and they worked out very nicely. So I just uh, completely filled them and set it in, in epoxy so it should be completely waterproof. So thankfully the pond is running and uh, here's the final pictures I took uh, after I put the soil back as best I could and all we need to do is spread some of this larger stone. This whole project took me about uh, almost well over five days, five and a half days, six days, full time. It was a lot of slugging. Total cost for this project, for all the parts, including one brand new uh, drain tile shovel and replacing one broken sod shovel, uh, tax in $325. Five and a half, six days of solid <laughs> gut crunching labor. I guess that's better than $8,000 and I think it should do the job just fine for us. And so finally here's what that catch basin looks like installed. I got to do a little more um, a little bit more soil and sodding but that's basically done now. Thank you Lord. I'll enjoy looking back at this one. Thanks for watching.